Hello, um, this is Manipa Starlight. Um, I'm having this paper which I just gave my learners, a small, simple uh, paper to end our, our, our tests uh, for this year, 3022, the year 3022, class X, okay, which is uh, physics 11. It's a simple, simple paper. So allow me to go through. This is physics. Physics. A 125 gram wooden plank in a beaker. And um, a, a 125 wooden plank is placed in a beaker. And below was the reading before and after placing it in the beaker. Before placing it, this was the volume of the water. After placing it, that is the level of the water. Before, after. What? Is the density of the wooden block write a formula first therefore and then replace the variables you've got the mass of 125 grams then the volume you look at the change in the level of the water this is about 250 okay 250 cubic centimeters and then it rose up to 500 cubic centimeters you always follow the lower meniscus of the liquid, not the one at the edge, but this one below, not the one at the edge here, because at the edge it, go, it curves up a little bit. So follow the lower meniscus. So 500 minus 250 gives us 250 cubic centimeters. That was the volume of the water which was displaced. The space which the wooden block uh, occupied, okay, and displaced the water which was there. So uh, if you do your math there, the density comes out as 0 0.5 grams per cubic centimeter. Number two, a person exists a horizontal force of 500 newtons in a box, which also experiences a friction of 100 newtons. How much work is done against friction when the box moves a horizontal distance of 3 meters? So work, the formula is work is equal to force times distance, of course, in the direction of force. And so we are told that um, the box is moved, but um, this movement of the box uh, is opposed by a, an opposing force or a force of friction. So how much work is done against friction? How much work is done in moving the box? So you have to find the resultant force. Resultant force is equal to action force minus reaction force. Our action is the greater one. Then reaction is the one that is opposing. So we subtract because part of these 500 newtons was used to overcome these 100 newtons. And so to cancel these 100 newtons, 100 newtons was used up from these 500. So what remained? The, bulk, the force which brought about the movement or the acceleration was the 400 newtons out of the 500 newtons. So we pick the 400 newtons as our resultant force, the unbalanced force. Plug it here. The distance moved was 3 meters. 400 times 3 meters, this is 400 newtons times 3 meters, to give us 1,200 newton meters, which is joule which is a due because it's work next question quite very simple complete the table below by indicating mode of heat transfer or medium by indicating the mode of heat transfer or medium okay you just fill up the box conduction okay medium happens in solids example iron uh, here we are given water this is a fluid therefore um, the medium, uh, this is an example of a fluid. So it belongs to media or which includes liquids and gases. Okay. And the mode of heat transfer in these liquids and gases, which are fluids, uh, is um, convection. Then lastly, in a vacuum, heat moves or is transmitted by radiation. An example of a vacuum is space. Okay. Mike was trying to find the boiling point of water at 1 atm, 1 atmosphere of pressure, by observing the temperature on the thermometer. 
how do you think he will know that the boiling point has been reached? My answer is when the temperature reading on the thermometer becomes constant or stops moving. If it's 50, it remains at 50 and you're still able to observe the boiling but it remains at 50. It means the BP has been reached. Five, state two factors that affect boiling of the liquid. State of purity and atmospheric pressure. The higher the atmospheric pressure, the higher the BP. The lower, the lower the BP. Uh, impurities depress the melting point and elevate the boiling point. So a substance will boil at a much higher temperature uh, when there are impurities in it. Number six, uh, it was observed that 120 crests pass through a slit in two hours. Okay, uh, what is the frequency of this wave? So frequency is equal to number of, of cycles per second or per given time, per period. So here 120 crests were passing in two hours. You have to convert these two hours to seconds because time is measured in seconds. Therefore, one hour is equal to 3600 seconds. 3600 times 2 will give you 7200 seconds. So the frequency of this wave is going to be 0.017 haze. So you write the formula first, see what you have. Say cycles are given, then convert this one to seconds. Understand that one hour is equal to 3600 seconds or 3600 seconds. So since there are two hours, you multiply this by two. Then you do your calculations and you get your uh, frequency. Next question is, name one type of electromagnetic wave and state one usefulness. I gave multiple there, but give only one. If you give radio, the use is going to be communication. Microwave, the use can be cooking. Light for visibility or even photosynthesis. Gamma rays for radiotherapy or sterilization of instruments or something like that. X-ray for imaging, okay, medical imaging, mechanical imaging, but for imaging. So you can just pick one from those. Or think of another which maybe I have left out. Then number eight, uh, an 8 kg brick fell from a building under construction. The brick fell from a height of 8 meters. Take G to be 10. Calculate the potential energy just before starting to fall. Remember the formula first before you can start doing this. PE, gravitational potential energy, is equal to mgh, mass times gravity times height. So mass is 8, okay, which is this 8 here. Uh, remember mass should be in kgs here. Then 10, which is our G, is given to us as G should be taken to be 10. The height is our 8 meters here. So after you multiply this, the answer comes out as 6400 joules. 6400 joules. Uh, the next question is, uh, calculate the potential energy after falling halfway down. Halfway down, you still get the mass, the G, which is this one. But halfway, since we are told that the height is 80, so halfway is going to be 40. When you apply this, it will give you 3,200 Jews. 3,200 Jews. Um, next question. How does solar eclipse come about? When the moon comes between the earth and the sun. Okay, that's how solar eclipse comes about. When the moon comes in between the earth and the sun, that's the simplest way of explaining it. We all know that the moon orbits the earth, but when it aligns itself in such a way that it's in between the earth and the sun, and its shadow cast, is cast on the earth, then we call that a solar eclipse. Um, which component of light has the longest wavelength? Radio waves. Okay, this comes from the topic of waves. Explain the effect of a convex lens on light rays. It causes parallel lines, I mean, parallel light rays to converge. It causes parallel light rays to converge. To add a little bit more flesh to this, to this um, answer would be, it causes uh, parallel, or maybe light rays that are parallel to the principal axis to be converged. Okay, it causes uh, light rays that are parallel to the principal axis to be converged. That's the effect of a convex lens. Draw a curve, I mean, draw a concave lens in the box below. 
Hamos said draw a cave man in his cave. Okay, so you draw a concave lens in the box below. This is a concave lens. Okay, we don't really look at it that much, but that's our concave lens. Uh, the, the following diagram shows information of image I from object O using um, a convex lens, not drawn to scale. What is the focal length of the lens? Do not start calculating using the lens formula. Just look at where the rays are converged from. They are always converged at the first focal point. Okay, first focal point because the lens is fixed. It's not like the lens in the eye which can adjust its curvature. Therefore, adjust its focal, uh, uh, somehow adjust its ability to accommodate more light and still bend it to the point where it's supposed to be bended to. This one is fixed. So the answer here is 23. Just here where the light is bended from. If there's another one down here, it will still pass through here. Define the term principal focus. This is the point along the principal axis where parallel rays passing through the through converge. Okay, and which is this? Okay. Um, this is the point along the principal axis where parallel rays passing through converge. 15. Give two properties of an image formed by a convex lens. It is inverted, meaning it's upside down. It's diminished, meaning it is small. Okay, they're usually small and inverted. So, and they're also referred to as real. Number 16. What do we call the process of removing magnet magnetic properties from a magnet? Demagnetization. Demagnetization. The last question there is 17. The following diagram shows the pattern and direction of the magnetic field between two magnetic poles. Which type of poles are J and K? It's got J and K. Always not to say magnetic field lines are drawn to be emanating from the north pole. So K is our north and they're always drawn to, to head towards or to move towards the south. So J is south and K is the north pole. That marks the end of this paper. Have a good day and remember to subscribe and uh, share these videos.